Vision Education Class 2 Maintaining or Increasing Activity in the Home Hi, my name is Paul and my goal is to allow you to be in your home and maintain your independence for as long as possible. In this video, I'll try to help solve problems that you may be having due to your vision. When I talk about being legally blind, that is a diagnosis from your doctor. Technically, it means that with your vision in your better eye, it would be 20 over 200 or less, and that's with correction. Legal blindness is when your field of view is less than 20 degrees, which is very similar to looking through a straw. Today, I'll be teaching you some adaptive techniques. These techniques will be little changes that you can make because of your vision, which also includes making your house safer and doing things more efficiently, like giving your home more lighting or wearing sunglasses. Now to begin, labeling can be helpful. This could be printing or using large print, placing a rubber band around your shampoo to tell it's not conditioner, or use bump dots like the ones that can be seen on the screen. These bump dots are just stickers that come in different sizes, shapes, textures, and colors. They're all different kinds. Now moving on, there are also color contrast techniques that you can use. One of the better examples includes keyboard stickers, which can be black on white, white on black, yellow on black, or black on yellow, so that whenever we create more contrast for something, we could just do that. Another example includes a large print clock. As you can see, the colors are contrasting, white and black, and the numbers are clear and large. Color contrast can be helpful in your life, whether it be with lighting or background, including pouring coffee into a white cup or using darker or lighting cutting boards to identify different objects. When using these cutting boards, lettuce knives can be helpful if you're having a bad eye day since they don't actually cut you. There's no sharp end on it. Having something like a darker colored tray can also help you find your medication and can also help you avoid mixing medications as there aren't many darker pills so they should be able to con contrast pretty nicely and you should be able to find them pretty easily since there's a lip that catches them from falling off another color contrast con another color contrast technique includes using black and white measuring cups and spoons they can be very helpful when you're measuring substances like flour or vanilla it helps those substances show up a little bit better. When you're eating, red and white dinner plates can show what is being offered on the table more clearly. For example, chicken may be seen better on a red plate than on a white plate. And now with regards to crafts, you could always use light colored yarn with different colored needles or vice versa. Now moving on to the next section, I'll talk about lighting. Decreasing and increasing and having different types of lights can, can make a major difference. Having an LED light, as can be seen on the screen, can be used for everyday tasks. They come in different forms, clip-on, desk lamp, or a handheld flashlight. You should utilize these tools to help you with whatever you need them for. Think about your home and what you may need different lighting for. For example, looking into the cabinet. Do you want hands-free headlamp for that? Do you want an under cabinet lighting or is the ambient light from your windows sufficient enough? However, uh, with the natural sl sunlight or the ambient light, um, they it could sometimes cause an unpleasant glare. In order to control for the natural lighting, having shades can be very helpful. You, sh you could also wear sunglasses indoors, which can decrease the contrast. It all comes down to your vision and what you prefer. If you have furniture that reflects the glare, then you should consider putting something on top of it, such as a covering with a tablecloth, um, placemat, or, or a, sever, a sofa covering. A darker floor is recommended as it reduces light burden by actually absorbing the light, but if it's still reflecting off of your tile or wood floor and you don't have a darker floor, then you could always put down a carpet or a rug to reduce the glare. On snowier days, when the light's reflecting off the ground, uh, you can wear sunglasses which, your prote which protect your entire eye, including the top, the sides, and the bottom, and those are the most helpful. Overhead lighting can also be uh, pleasant or a burden, 
so just make sure there isn't any flickering to avoid any unnecessary stress. I'd recommend using a light bulb that is like the natural daylight, which has the full natural spectrum. Um, it's supposed to be the least stressful on your eyes while being the closest option to natural sunlight. Light dimmers are also very helpful. You could start it up slowly or turn the lights down slowly. It's all about finding balance in your room. Having corners that are not too dark, places that are clear. Because when you go from place to place that are very bright and very dark, it may take your eyes a little bit to get used to the environment. As we get older, our eyes are less able to accommodate to these changes in lighting. So adding a health issue on top of that will increase the changes you, the challenges you face on a daily basis. <clears throat> so the next section I would like to touch upon is organization. This isn't just the individual, but the family and caretakers as well. Everyone has their own methods, so you can't just go into someone's home and tell them that they need to do something this way or they need to do something that way. You need to think about what makes sense to you as you're the one that will be cleaning this where you want to put your tools over the sink in the cleaning cabinet. What type of labeling will you use? Can you see colors or large print easily? Do you like the bump dots? Choose whatever way it works for you, come up with the method and stick to it. When it comes to organizing your closet and seeing your colors, portable lights or extra lighting can be, can be very helpful. Also, asking someone else for help is an option as well. If you have a pair of black pants and blue pants, but you can't tell a difference, you can ask someone for help and label the pants with a safety button or a pin, which may make those pants easier to find. Organizing your closet by color may not always be helpful, especially when they come back from the wash jumbled and mixed to the point where you don't even know what's what anymore. A good system can be putting a safety pin on the leg of your black pants while putting two on the blue pants. There is also a device, an expensive device, um, which is called the color identifier. You put it up against your clothing and it shows the difference between the shades. For example, if you put it up to something darker, if it's and it, and it sh tells you the difference between whether it's black or tan. There are also cheaper alternatives to this $300 device, but they're not always accurate. These include colored hangers for clothes, like using a blue hanger for blue clothes and red hanger for red clothes. So that was a summary regarding organizational techniques. Now I will talk to you how you can go about identifying things. You can use your five senses. You can feel the texture of something like how salt and pepper feel different. You can organize it with a label where there is a band on the salt but nothing on the pepper. Uh, you can feel the weight. Salt is a little bit heavier. Um, also, black and white salt and pepper shakers have a big P or S, so you can see that clearly. And if you're brave enough, you can, always, you can always use your sense of smell to tell the differences. If you've ever found yourself in a position where you've accidentally used something else than toothpaste, you can organize your medicine cabinet a certain way by keeping your toothbrush supplies together while keeping the other stuff separate. You live with others the hard part is keeping them organized so if someone that likes to keep their cupboard organized maybe make large print labels for not just yourself but for your roommate as well it could be very helpful going back to smell you can check if your clothes are dirty whether or not you're using the right spices for example if you're supposed to be using cinnamon in those muffins rather than paprika with regard to communication using large print calendars can give you help uh, and they can help you figure out what day it is. Talking watches can help with uh, knowing what time and date it is. Phones uh, with large print, they help you dial numbers easier. A closed circuit television, also known as a CCTV, can be very helpful. So CCTVs are basically a tabletop that looks like a computer it has a magnification piece where you put a piece of paper under it and the CCTV places it on the screen. And the, from there you can change the size, contrast, just see the, see the document in better, see the document better in general. Um, however, you don't always need a CCTV to do so. There, there are other alternatives such as a regular smartphone or tablet 
will do the trick just as well. There are different applications such as Spotlight and Magnifier that can be helpful and if you don't have access to those applications then you can always just take a picture and zoom in on what it is you're trying to see better. Additionally, when you're reading, to help you stay on track, you can use black or white pieces of paper like you did in grade school just to keep it under the line as you're reading because it's much easier to follow along and track. Cooking safety is also an important aspect. The Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired offers a brighter views course including stove top oven safety and reaching into an oven without burning yourself. Cooking food thermometers can also be very helpful for reading how hot your food is. Bump dots can be placed on the microwave, refrigerator, oven, basically anything in the kitchen, especially since there aren't many buttons anymore uh, as everything is on, pa on flat panels nowadays. These bumps will help, you orient, uh, will help orient you to the significant places in your kitchen. This can be especially helpful with stovetops. You can mark all the dials on different settings to identify what setting to cook and when to set the burners. Also, a liquid level indicator is very helpful if you over poured too much in a cup. It has little prongs that go into the cup and the blue part on the outside has a speaker and a battery so that when the prongs get wet, they beep. It gives you an inch or so of clearance before you get to the top and go over so it prevents any unnecessary spills. There are also some that vibrate so that you're able to take these into the uh, public places like a restaurant or party, uh, mainly if you don't want to make any noise. Now, the locator technique will help you to look for things around the kitchen. This is very useful if you've reached for something and knocked it over in your path. So, you're, so you position your hands like claws and position them on the table in front of you as such and keep going further and further from your body until you bump into something. The idea is if you bump into your hot coffee, coffee cup, you won't burn yourself. Or if you knock into your wine glass, it's a quick and gentle motion so you won't knock it over. Now I'll be moving on to finances. There are also different tools for your finances. Guides for your signature can be very helpful. Signature guides are a little two by three inch pieces of plastic uh, with a little rectangle in the middle. And we give them to people with lower vision or people who can't see at all so, so that they can feel where to sign their names. Um, there are also templates for checks. You can ask your bank for a large print check with various lines. Uh, there are envelope guides for address and return labels and a full package guide, which is the size of a piece of paper with rectangles cut out in a straight line. Also, some banks offer large print checks. There are also large print check registers that have lines and the breakdown for the date and everything else. As mentioned previously for reading, you can use a piece of paper to isolate your line you're working on. That's visual clutter that you don't need to pay attention to. Additionally, there are smartphone apps that tell you how much money is in your hand. There is something offered by the Department of Treasury called the iBill, where you put money in and it responds loudly with what the amount is. You can also learn to identify coins by touch using a talking calculator. And also on newer cash, there is, a there is large print on the bottom right corner of every value aside from the ones. Now on to home management. Large print remotes from Spectrum have large tactile buttons with numbers that make it easier to navigate. When it comes to vacuuming, there is an overlapping grid technique. You start at one end where you're cleaning, then you move up halfway, then you go to the other side and do the same. So you're cleaning what you've already cleaned and then some more, making a grid slightly overlapping each time. This can also be done when you're sweeping the kitchen floor, move over a little, go back, move over a little, go back. You break up your space into different areas with a chair or trash can to have a square to work in instead of the entire room where you can easily get lost. You can start by the doors and move towards the corner before taking a break and going onto the other corner. If you bump into your walls with a vacuum, you can use a contrast tape, which is a black and yellow tape with diagonal lines that you can stick onto places you tend to bump into. 
With regards to home safety, you can remove all area rugs unless they're helpful with blocking glare as discussed earlier. And in that case, you just make sure you get the non-slip ones and that they're contrasting colors so that you don't trip. Also, when you're plugging in the electrical cords, uh, you can put some bump dots on the wall near the outlet so you know where they actually are. Also, you can use bump dots to set the thermostat by putting the dot on the thermostat body itself and then putting a dot just below the ideal temperature and corresponds with the other dot that way. You can adjust the temperature to be cooler or warmer however you'd like. If you struggle unlocking the door, then you can use the lock and, tea, lock and key technique. You use your thumb to find the lock, and then you put your key alongside your thumb and guide it until the key is in the lock. Now with regard to self-care activities, we talked about opening pills over a dark tray, magnifying mirrors with lights, talking personal thermometers and thermostats. You put it up to your forehead and the thermostat tells you what, the temp what temperature you are. And there are talking glucometers as well. Finally, we'll talk about recreation. There are large print playing cards, large print bingo games, large print crossword puzzles, and almost every game is adapted some way for the visually impaired to be able to participate. There are large X's and O's that are magnetic, so you don't need to worry about losing them or using the locator technique. There are also large print stickers for popular games like Scrabble. In summary, you're problem solving everything. You're going to want to break things down into steps so it's easier for you to address the challenges that you face along the way. When it comes to maybe doing your laundry, is your challenge figuring out how much detergent you put in your machine and what are some ways you can get around doing that? Do you get a large print measuring cup for it? Do you buy the pods? When it comes to setting your washer or dryer, do you have a problem seeing your settings? What are some ways you can address that? Might you need better lights? Magnification? Do you have to mark things with large print? Maybe you use the bump dots. Also, when you get your clothes out and seeing the colors, how do you address that? There's a process to this. You break things down step by step, and that way it makes things easier. Thank you for listening to this presentation.